Welcome to the 5th AG screencast on grid computing brought to you by the direct user support team. During this screencast we will discuss how to deal with grid jobs that require large input files or produce large output files, where large refers to either the file size of the data or to the total number of files. As we have seen in a previous screencast, to direct input data to or output data from a job running on the grid, we may conveniently use the input sandbox and output sandbox attributes in the JDL file. Using the input sandbox attribute, in essence we define the necessary files that need to be transferred onto the worker node so that the execution of our workflow is enabled. In the output sandbox attribute, we define which of the files we want to be transferred back on the user interface once our workflow is completed. Notice that the files that we include in these two attributes are transferred in both cases via the WMS service. In many cases, however, it is not convenient to transfer the necessary input data or the requested output data via the WMS, either because these are too large in size or because there are many files that makes management through the JDL very cumbersome. In such cases, we may use the LCG commands presented also in a previous screencast alongside with a few command line utilities directly through our submission script. In case we want to use the LCG commands both for the input and the output data, the first thing we need to do is to upload the input data to a grid storage element from the user interface using the LCGCR command. Once we know the GUID of the input data, we edit our submission script and use one LCGCP command that will take care of downloading the input data locally on the worker node. We then insert one LCGCR command that will take care of uploading the output data on a grid storage element. The GUID of the new grid file will be written to the standard output file, so once we have this file back, we can download the output locally on the user interface with an LCGCP command. If along the way we are not using GUIDs of files but rather logical file names, the whole procedure becomes even simpler. Moving on to a hands-on example, we shall review the two corner cases of using the input sandbox and output sandbox attributes and then we will use these to a bare minimum. I start off by connecting to the user interface where I have prepared a small example job. As can be seen from the JDL file, my executable is a cell script. As input data, on top of the shell script, I include the source C++ file and a file named input.txt. In the output sandbox attribute, I define besides the stdout and the stdair files, two more files named output.txt and file.gnuplot. These two files will be produced by my submission script run.sh. As usual, before submitting the job to the grid, I create a proxy certificate using the VOMS proxy init command. I then submit the job using the GLI WMS job submit command. Once the status of my job is in the done success state, I can retrieve the files defined in the output sandbox attribute with the GLI WMS job output command. As you can see, the four files now reside within the results directory. Returning to the initial JDL, I will now make all the necessary modifications to reduce the number of files transferred via the WMS to a bare minimum. I thus only keep the executable script in the input sandbox attribute and the stdout and stdair files in the output sandbox attribute. I then create a tarball of the input files I want to transfer onto the worker node and upload that tarball to a grid storage element. I also link this file against the logical file name I will use in just a few seconds. I now edit the run.sh script to insert the necessary lcg commands. Notice that I need to explicitly define the name of the LFC server I will be using. I next type in the lcgcp command using the logical file name I have previously defined for my input data tarball. The two last commands I need to insert will take care of packing and uploading the output data to a storage element. So once again, I will create a tarball of the two files I want to retrieve later on onto the user interface and use the lcgcr command to upload that tarball to a storage element. 
Once my job is in the done success state, I will be able to retrieve the output data directly from that storage element and not via the WMS using an LCGCP command. I then submit the modified job as usual using the July WMS job submit command. Once the status of the job has reached the done success state, I may download the output sandbox with the July WMS job output command. I store these results under the results modify directory. As you can see, only the stdout and the stdair files have been transferred via the WMS. To obtain the table that was uploaded directly from the worker node, I will use the GUID of the file that has been written in the stdout file. Once the download is complete, I can unpack the results and I can now use GNUplot to view them graphically. This concludes our screencast on large data file management directly from the worker node. During our next screencast we will review more advanced workflows such as parametric jobs, DAG jobs and collections of jobs. Until then, thank you for watching.